Here is a Twitter video of the interview. Listen and watch. Of interview with Nicholas Sandman, the Kentucky high school student at the center of this now infamous encounter with a Native American elder. Over the past few days, NBC News has sat down with Nathan Phillips three times and heard his side of the story. And now for the first time, the 16-year-old is saying what he saw. Do you feel from this experience that you owe anybody an apology? Do you see your own fault? In any way? As far as standing there, I had every right to do so. I don't, I, my position is that I was not disrespectful to Mr. Phillips. I respect him. I'd like to talk to him. I mean, in hindsight, I wish we could have walked away and avoided the whole thing. But I can't say that I'm sorry for listening to him and standing there. This morning, 16-year-old Nick Sandman standing by his actions in this moment gone viral. The junior at Kentucky's Covington Catholic High School, now the face of this Lincoln Memorial confrontation with Native American elder Nathan Phillips. And what's it been like to be at the center of the storm? Well, I've been, it's weird to see your face on television. I've been reading a lot. Uh, and, you know, I've also been getting a lot of messages from people, both support and all. A lot of hateful things. Sandman and dozens of his classmates had just finished attending an anti-abortion March for Life rally when they converged with five Hebrew Israelites, a radical movement that is growing more militant, according to the Southern Poverty Law Center. They started shouting a bunch of, you know, homophobic, racist, uh, derogatory comments at us. What kinds of things did you hear them say? I heard them call us incest kids, bigots, racists. Uh, they call us A bunch of in incest babies. A bunch of child molesters. Did you feel threatened at all? I definitely felt threatened. There were more of you than them, but you felt like they were stronger? They were a group of adults, and I wasn't sure what was going to happen next. It's unclear from the videos who actually started the confrontation. Each side believes it was the first to be taunted. Sandman says his chaperone gave students permission to shout school chants, an attempt, he says, to drown out the Hebrew Israelites. Do you think it was a good idea to start chanting back at the protesters? In hindsight, I wish we had just found another spot to wait for our buses, but uh, at the time, being positive seemed better than letting them slander us with all of these things. So I wish we could have walked away. Did anyone shout any insults back or any racial slurs back at the group? Uh, we're a Catholic school and it's not tolerated. We're they don't tolerate racism, and none of my classmates are racist people. Did anyone say, build the wall? I never heard anyone say, build the wall, and um, I don't think I've seen it in any videos. After a review of the videos, NBC News could not hear anyone shouting that hot-button phrase, but Nathan Phillips claims he heard the teen shout, build the wall. Oh yeah, I heard that. Phillips was with a group of Native Americans coming from an Indigenous Peoples March when he can be seen walking between the students and the protesters. I intervened and things just escalated from there. Phillips says he was trying to defuse the tense situation. Sandman says he was confused about Phillips' motives and why he was there. At first we were unsure of whether he was trying to join in and drum to the, our chance or what he was doing. Did you feel like he was trying to get somewhere else to go toward the Lincoln Memorial? I'm not sure where he wanted to go and if he wanted to walk past me I would have let him go. In that moment he's looking at you, you're looking at him. What's going through your mind? I wanted the situation to die down and uh, I just wish he would have walked away but I knew as long as I kept my composure and didn't do anything that he might perceive as aggressive or elevation of the conflict, that um, it would hopefully die. Why didn't you walk away? 
well, now I wish I would have walked away. I didn't want to be disrespectful to Mr. Phillips and walk away if he was trying to talk to me. But um, I was certainly, I was surrounded by a lot of people I didn't know that had their phones out, had cameras, and I didn't want to bump into anyone or seem like I was trying to do something. The center of the firestorm, what critics characterize as a smirk on Sandman's face. Some saying it was an attempt to stare down Phillips. What do you think that looks like? I see it as a smile saying that this is the best you're going to get out of me. You won't get any further reaction of aggression. And I'm willing to stand here as long as you want to hit this drum in my face. What some people see is a young kid with a smirk on his face. Mm -hmm. What would you say for people who see that and are making a judgment about who you are? Well, people have judged me based off one expression, which I wasn't smirking, but people have assumed that's what I have. And they've gone from there to titling me and labeling me as a racist person, someone that's disrespectful to adults, which they've had to assume so many things to get there without consulting anyone that can give them the opposite story. We looked at that video and thought about how it felt from the, the other's perspective. In other words, there were a lot of you, a handful of the others. Do you think they might have felt threatened by a bunch of young men kind of beating their chests? I mean, I certainly hope they didn't feel threatened by us. Uh, I would just say that the fact remains that they initiated uh, their comments with us and uh, I mean, they provoked us into a peaceful response of school spirit. Sandman says he didn't see other students performing what appears to be a tomahawk chop. There's something aggressive about standing there, standing your ground. You both stood your ground. And it was like a stare down. What do you think of that now when you think about that moment? Oh, I would say Mr. Phillips had his right to come up to me. I had my right to stay there. Um, our school uh, was slandered by the African Americans who had called us all sorts of things. As for those red Make America Great Again hats that some students were wearing, Sandman says he bought his that day from a street vendor in Washington. Do you think if you weren't wearing that hat, this might not have happened or it might have been different? That's possible, but I would have to assume what Mr. Phillips was thinking, and I'd rather let him speak for why he came up to us. The conflict has caught the president's attention. He tweeted that Sandman and his classmates were treated unfairly and have become symbols of fake news. Sandman says he's appreciative of the president's tweets, but all the attention has taken a toll. What's this been like for you and for your family? It's been terrible. People have threatened our lives. Sandman says he doesn't want to live his life in fear, and he now hopes to come out of this with a deeper understanding of others. I have the utmost respect for Mr. Phillips. It's another person that freely uses his First Amendment right, and I want to thank him for his military service as well, and I'd certainly like to speak with him. Well, as mentioned, we, you know, we've interviewed Mr. Phillips a few times, but we invited him again now in light of this conversation. So I think we're going to hear from him tomorrow on today. There was actually a really interesting moment at the school mm -hmm. yesterday where protesters came and there was a moment where a, a young kid who was wearing that red Make America Great Again hat and another Native American said, you know, maybe we should just sit down. This guy said, yeah, we should just it. sit down and, and talk about they it. They swap phone numbers and yeah. they agreed to have a meeting. It's nice to see a little thawing in those tensions because you saw that moment and it yeah. was also nice to hear from 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 that uh, that 16 year old whose who's face and and that expression uh -huh. that he made for a lot of folks became a symbol a lot of a lot of different things it was good to hear from him yes. for the first time since Great. we had heard from mr phillips well, it'd be good to hear from situations you actually have video so people yes. are right. certainly free to make their own judgments yes. about what they think mm -hmm. happened there mm -hmm. by the way it was an adult in that video i thought yeah. it was a student yeah. but it was an adult who was there at the protest uh -huh. yesterday